Hi everyone, and today we're going to do a playthrough of Sentinels of the Multiverse. It's a fantastic sort of a, I guess it's not a deck building game, but a card game, and I'm sure that if you're watching this, you're probably familiar with it, or at least giving it some consideration. We're going to play a solo variant that was created by Jack Darwood on Board Game Geek, and I think you're going to enjoy it. I think basically we're going to dive right in. I do use a pen and paper method of uh, tabulating hit points and health and all that sort of thing. So you can see here that we've got um, Ra and the Wraith, our two heroes, who are going to be up against Deadline. Deadline has 80 hit points and he starts with the Atomic Enclave in play, which is a device. Um, <clears throat> there's also another deck which is just out of sight here. This deck consists of all the other heroes that I have in all the expansions and what have you. And what you do is you keep this and the heroes are going to get to play a card, one card from there and they each get an extra turn and we're going to see that in action. And the way we've written it down here is we've got uh, Wraith and Ron Deadline uh, with their max hit, hit points and this is, you'll see how I use this as we go. The environment that we're playing is the realm of discord. So that seemed like a lot of fun for this scenario. Uh, some of the things I'm keeping, like some of the discard piles are gonna be out of sight of the uh, of where I'm filming, but I think that'll be less distracting for you guys anyway, because as I build up, uh, say, uh, some of their equipment and uh, ongoing cards here, this is gonna get a little bit busy in here, and not to mention deadlines cards. So we're, we'll do our best to keep the playing area uh, friendly and, um, I don't know, just sort of visually manageable. All right, well, we start with the villain turn, then we go to our hero turns, which will be Raw and then Wraith in that order, and then we go to the environment turn, and that represents one full um, round, as it were. Okay, so uh, let's begin. For the villain turn, you start with any start, start of turn effects, but there aren't any. Um, so we draw a card. So the villain plays a card, which is Deadline, and he gets a one shot. It's an unnatural disaster. It says what we need to do is reveal the top H minus one cards of the villain deck. Put all catastrophe cards revealed into play and discard the other cards revealed this way. Okay, so here's the thing. In this variant, H, some of you, again, are familiar with the game, but in this variant, H is always three. Okay, so um, whereas it's it's a, a, a variable that's used to balance the game, so if there was five heroes, H would be five, or four heroes, H would be four, etc. In this variant, H is always three. So reveal the top two cards of the villain deck, put all catastrophe cards revealed into play, and discard the other cards revealed this way. So one, it's an unnatural disaster, and two, it's a catastrophe. So this one gets discarded, and the catastrophe comes into play, which has a starter turn effect. It's called Calculated Orogenesis. I'm not too familiar with Deadline, actually. I think I've only really played him once before, so um, I'm not completely sure what's gonna come my way here. Okay, so that's Deadline's play turn, and now it's the end of the turn. And it says this, at the end of the villain turn, if there are three or more catastrophe cards in play, no, there's only one, flip deadlines villain character cards. Otherwise, play the top card of the villain deck. Here's the top card of the villain deck. It's an ongoing catastrophe, which has a start of turn effect, so there's nothing more to do. So we have two catastrophes in play, and now we have to deal with this which is a device that says, at the end of the villain turn, this card deals the hero target with the highest HP, three energy damage. We have no defense against that yet. We can see from, uh, this is representing not only the starting HP, but we'll keep it there because it represents the max HP for each of them. We can see at a glance, Ra has the most HP, so he will take three energy damage, and he is now at 27. Okay, that's all there is to it. 
So we go over to Ra, who draws four cards. One, two, three, four. The villain turns over. Okay. Technically, both these guys should have drawn hands, and I should be looking at them, but it probably doesn't make a difference. So let's just go this route. Okay, well, I can tell you right off the top, I've got Inferno, I've got Fire Blast, I've got Blazing Tornado, and I've got Summon Staff. These are all good cards, really good cards, um, but I'm going to use Summon Staff, okay? So I get to search, uh, Ra gets to search his deck for the Staff of Ra, put it in my hand, and shuffle my deck. Then I can draw a card, and then I can play a card. It's a pretty good deal. It's a one-shot. So, searching the deck for the Staff of Ra. I think, there's, I think there's two of them, actually. So there it is. It says, put it in my hand, and then shuffle my deck. Okay. Now, it says that I can draw a card, and then I can play a card. So this is, this is going fairly well. Um, I will draw a card. It's another Staff of Ra. How interesting is that? Now I can play a card, and I am going to play one of my Staffs of Ra. You'll notice that the Staff of Ra is an equipment. It's a relic, but it's also limited. Uh, the interesting thing about that is that means that only one of these can be in play at any time. But if something gets destroyed, I'll be in good shape for it, okay? Uh, so, when this card enters play, Ra regains three hit points coming into play. So Ra regains three hit points. So he is at 30 again, and it goes on to say that we increase damage dealt by Ra by 1. <clears throat> so this was all play a card. We haven't yet used a power. So he's going to use a power, which is his inherent power, called Pyre, on his character card. It says Ra deals each target 2 fire damage. And with the staff of Ra, I increase that by 1. So I'm going to deal 3 damage. So, let's put three damage onto the Atomic Enclave. Now this is where it could get a little bit confusing for you guys, because I'm going to add these to the Atomic Enclave. You can see how this device starts with ten. I'm going to put these three on it, and you'll see that it's, so it's not using this system, okay? Only the two heroes and the main villain are using this system, okay? So, Ra did, let me see if I get that right, one, two, three, I think we're good, so he used a power, so now for the hero turn, he gets to draw a hero card, nothing more he can do, oh, look at that, I got a staff of Ra, that's uh, pretty zany, I didn't know there were three in there, okay, well, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but anyway, it's the end of his turn, there are no end of turn things to take care of here, so we are done. I'll just put that something like that for now. All right, over to Wraith. She gets four cards. One, two, three, four. Let's have a look. Uh, utility belt, very handy. Inventory barrage, also handy, but it's a sacrificing type of a, of a mechanism. Uh, razor ordnance, that's very good, and so is the grappling hook. Uh, in fact, as one shots go, I'm going to use the grappling hook because it says I can destroy one ongoing or environment card and then I may draw a card. That's a pretty good deal. So I'm going to play this out. So this will go into her discard. Oh, sorry, again, I, I know that these are out of sight for you guys, but that's, that's intentional. Uh, yeah, so destroy one ongoing or environment card. Well, there's no environments in place, so let's have a look at these ongoing cards. I think I will get rid of this one. I think I will get rid of this one. So calculated orogenesis is going to be discarded. And according to the grappling hook, I can now draw a card. So we played a card, and now we get to use a power. She is going to use her inherent power, which is called stealth, which says that this reduces the next damage that would be dealt to the wraith by two. So. In order to remember that, I'm going to take a couple of markers, your little eyeballs, and I'm going to put it here, which basically means 
look at me, all right? And then I'm going to put the eyeballs here. Because Actually, I really only need to put it on the villain, don't I? So if the villain or the environment tries to deal her damage, I'm going to remember to have a look at the matching eyeball. This isn't a perfect system. Um, I, what I need to do is I need to divide this up a little further where one thing says, uh, where instead of putting eyeballs on all these three, I could only do one and so forth. So this needs a little bit of massaging, but that's okay. All right, now here's where the variant comes in. So the next damage that would come her way, she's gonna reduce it by two. Now, what we do now with this variant is we go to our deck of cards, which is just out of sight for you guys, and we draw up the top card. And then you can tell that this is a, this is a, uh, a printed out version of Captain Cosmic's um, sort of enhanced hero card. So you don't use his healthy side, you use his depleted side. And then Ra going first, Wraith going second, they each get to pick one of these depleted items. The thing to remember about this is, is that both of our heroes can pick the same item, all right? I read through the description on Board Game Geek, and it's my understanding that they can pick the same item. So, Ra can draw a card now. In fact, what Ra can do is he can tell Wraith to draw a card, all right? So when it says one player, it wouldn't have to be Ra, okay? So theoretically, or technically, Wraith could be drawing two cards now. Ra could tell her to draw a card, and Wraith could choose to draw a card as well. Anyway, I think you get it. So one player can draw a card, one target can regain two hit points, one player may discard a card, and if they do, they may draw three cards. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see if we've got any cards that we would discard. Uh, she might do that with Trust Fund. Oh yeah, we've got all the Staff of Raws, don't we? Um, no one needs to regain any hit points. I think, I think Ra will just draw a card. Okay, so he got a card. Wraith is going to, according to this, discard one card and draw three. So we're going to discard Trust Fund and draw three cards. One, two, three. All right, that is finished. Okay, so that's it. That's the full solo two-player variant turn. Excuse me, not two-player. <laughs> that was a bit of an oxymoron. That was the full solo two-hero variant. Now we go to the Realm of Discord and we draw the top environment card. It's the environment turn. And this is a distortion. It says, when this card enters play, destroy all other distortion cards. And there aren't any. Each ongoing and equipment card now has a maximum of 6 HP. Oh, that's really neat. So each ongoing and equipment card now has a maximum of 6 HP. This is kind of new to me. Um, I wasn't aware that that would be coming my way. <clears throat> so what I think I'll do is I think maybe I'll just get a six-sided die and add it to this card and this card to represent that they both have 6 HP. Okay, you can see that I've just added my six-sided die now, and this is that's a little bit of a different mechanic for me. I don't think I knew Deadline did that. Or, excuse me, the Realm of Discord did that. But that's fine. That's fine. Um, that seems like a fairly balanced thing. It's a disadvantage for me. It's a disadvantage for him. But I've got a couple of other stabs of raw, so I should be all right. All right, so that's turn number one. Why don't we do a second turn? Mm, you know what? On second thought, let's not. Uh, it's probably easier for me to edit videos uh, in short chunks and get them posted. So let's just stop it there and we will pick up round two, as it were, with the villain in the next video. Cheers.